So here's a map, and in this map you can see a car going around a curve, and this is a banked curve. Uh, and, and the question is, if the, if the radius of curvature of that road is 300 meters and the angle is banked at 5 degrees, how fast should the car go? I should have brought a car. Let me get a car. There, does that help? No, like that. Okay. So the car is going to go around in a circle, but if you were able to look at the car head on, Here's the, here's the road, here's a normal road, and here's the car, right, going around a curve like this, let's say it's going this way. The angle's actually banked up, you know, like, like NASCAR would be really highly banked, but this is just slightly banked at a five degree angle. So there's a the car. Uh, so the question is, how fast could you go? So let's draw the uh, forces on this diagram, because it's not trivial. Let's start from uh, up here, I know that it has to have a force pushing it towards the center of the circle. Why? Because if it is moving with some velocity v, and a little bit later it has the same velocity but in a different direction over there, then there is a change in velocity. So that if there is a change in velocity, there is an acceleration. The magnitude of this acceleration we call the centripetal acceleration, and it has a value of v squared over r, and I'm just using capital R because I use capital R right there, where v is the magnitude of the velocity and r is the radius of the circle. So the question then is what, what force would be causing that? Uh, and if it's a flat curve, then it's actually a friction force that does this. But in, in a banked curve, I don't even need the friction. Okay, So let's think about our force diagram right here. In this case, I'm actually, let's, I want to consider the car it doesn't matter if it's moving in or out of the paper, but let's say it's moving out of the paper. Uh, so what forces are acting on the car? Well, let's draw a force diagram. So here's my... Why did I just redraw? I'm just getting more, more space. There's my car right there. Now, we, we have to think about long-range forces and contact forces. What long-range forces are acting on this? Well, the only one is the gravitational force pulling straight down. Mg. What contact forces are there? Well, the road's touching it, and so that would exert a normal force, which means perpendicular. So there is a normal force that's perpendicular to the road this way. Like that. What else is touching the, the car? Nothing. And there's no friction. We don't want friction. So, but how can we have these two forces add up to be zero? And the answer is they don't. They have to add up to accelerate. So the, the question is, which way is it accelerating? It's accelerating towards the center of the circle, which is this way. That's the center of the circle, right? So imagine this car going around a curve. At that instant, the acceleration is towards the center of the circle, which is that way, to the way I'm drawing it here. Okay, so let's get some uh, values here. Um, because if I call this the x direction and that the y direction, if that's the angle theta, then this is also the angle theta, right? Because imagine that uh, as that plane goes down to zero degrees, the normal force would be straight up. So the angle there decreases. Now I can write this. F net Y equals zero. F net X equals uh, M A X. So in this case, I'm calling this my y direction. Don't call up and down the plane your axis. You want to pick your x or y axis such that the direction of the acceleration is in one of those directions. And in this case, it's in the x direction, right, if I put it this way. So it's not moving up or down the track. It's not accelerating this way, so the forces in the y direction have to be zero. The forces in the x direction would be the acceleration. In this case, that would be negative m v squared over r. So it's the mass times the acceleration v squared over r because it's moving in a circle. It's negative because I just happen to pick that to be the negative x direction. So now let's write these as forces. What forces are in the y direction? Well, I have part of the gravitational force. If I draw this in a better picture, there's my n, that's my n y, that's n x. 
and that's the angle theta, and that's n. So n y is going to be equal to n cosine theta. That's my vertical component of the normal force. And then I have the vertical component of the gravitational force is minus mg. Now, be careful. We've done inclined plane problems before, but in those cases, uh, we pick the axis uh, along the plane because that's the way it was accelerating. And this is not doing that, right? It's doing something different. But those two forces have to add up to zero, and that's one equation. Now in the x direction, let's do the same thing. What forces are in the x direction? It's just part of this normal force. It's that nx. And it would be negative n sine theta. n sine theta is the magnitude of this. The negative is because it's in the negative direction. And that would be equal to negative m v squared over r. Now what do I want to solve for? I want to find v. Okay, So it, I can take this and solve for v if I want to. So let's say uh, the negatives cancel, multiply both sides by r, divide by m, and I get v squared equals n sine theta r over m. But I don't know n. I can solve for n over here. So let's add mg to both sides. I get n cosine theta equals mg. Now I can divide both sides by cosine theta. n equals mg over cosine theta. And I can plug that in over here. I get v squared equals n, but I'm going to put this in, mg over cosine theta. And then I have sine theta. And then I have r. And then I have an over m. So all I do is substitute for n. I put in this stuff. And you'll notice the mass cancels. And I have sine over cosine. I can write that as tangent theta. So I get g tangent theta r. Now I need to take the square root of both sides, and I get v equals the square root of g r tangent theta. Now let's put in my values, square root of 9.8 times 300 times the tangent of 5. Uh, but let's check real quick. This is going to be meters per second squared, uh, and then r is in meters, so I get meters squared per second squared. Tangent theta is a ratio, it has no units. So I get meters squared per second squared, take the square root, I do get meters per second, which is a velocity. So let's put this in my calculator. I'm going to turn on my calculator. Uh, clear, is it in degrees? It is in degrees mode. Uh, so we put it in degrees mode because I have an angle in degrees. Uh, so if I do that, I can put it right here. No, you can't see right there. Okay. So I'm going to say square root 9.8 times 300 times tangent 5. Close parentheses, close parentheses. I think that'll work. And I get 16 meters per second. Um, if you want, you can convert that to miles per hour, but I think that's fine. Uh, that's the, the speed that you need to go at in order so that there's no friction. Now, let's just imagine, what if I went faster? If I went faster than that, then the acceleration uh, would be, I would increase the acceleration. But this normal force can't provide that acceleration. I recount, the normal force magnitude depends on the angle on mg. So it's not going to move in a circle. In fact, it would move in a bigger circle, and in order to move in a bigger circle, it would go up. So if you're going too fast around that curve, you're going to slide up the incline. It's actually possible to not go fast enough, in which case you would start sliding down the incline and accelerating just like a plane. But that's your banked curve problem.